Good morning, everyone. Nice to see everybody. Um, I have a few announcements to give to you today. Um, there's going to be a deacon's fund at the end of the service during the last hymn. There's Advent readings start next Sunday, and there's one family each Sunday uh, speaking during the service. And there is next Sunday, a pie Sunday, where everybody, if you can, bring in a, your favorite pie or your leftover pies from Thanksgiving. And then there is a Christmas potluck luncheon on Sunday, December 11th. And we would like everybody to bring their favorite dish. And if you have any questions, ask Kim, D or Eva about that day and what you would can bring to the luncheon. And I have three things to talk about. Um, one is I am so thankful for everyone that brought in food items for the Thanksgiving food baskets. It's great. The, we did a really great job. I mean, there's a variety of products <laughs> and it's just a really good um, year that we got so many food items, and I'm just so grateful that everybody participated. And my second um, one that I want to talk about is the coat drive. I'll start collecting coats, and I, I'll call this pew the giving, the giving pew. And um, you can put your coats that you bring in on the pew, and they should be new or gently used and clean. And, and also they're um, asking for hats, gloves, and mittens, hats, gloves, scarves, mittens, and it starts with babies to adults. And my third item is talking about the birthday cards, so I will put up another list for December, and I just think it would be a really great thing if everyone in the congregation sent out one card to one special person that you see in the congregation and it keeps us um, communicating during the week and not just on Sunday and it makes us feel more welcome or it makes you happy when you get a card in the mail, a pretty card. It does for me. So I just wanted to mention that. Welcome to worship and good morning. Across the years, I have seen a lot of harvest uh, tables in churches. This one exceeds all of them together. And uh, to, you, to you, Jane, and your family, thank you, thank you very much. One, one uh, simply begins to feel Thanksgiving. When you take a look at this, thank you ever so much. We gather in the faith that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God eternal, we come into your presence with thanksgiving to worship you, to sing, to pray, to ponder the word, and to break bread, that we might go forth from this place into our neighborhoods and world to live differently and see and serve because we belong to you and because we are called to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us celebrate your spirit, O Lord, Grant us strength, give us grace to grow, and mostly help us to forget ourselves for a moment in this hour that we might lose ourselves in Christ's spirit and sake. Amen. That we might be called to worship, let us stand. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, to the God of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. The Lord is a great God. Good morning. Happy Sunday. For our opening hymn, we are singing, Come, You Thankful People, Come, um, hymn 473 of your red hymnals. Please be seated. Mindful that we are pilgrims and sojourners and often strangers to one another and others, we come before the Lord to confess our sin. And now for a uni unison prayer of confession. Loving God, you show us grace and mercy again and again and again. You shower gifts on us that we could never earn, and you are slow to punish us when we most deserve it. All too often, we forget to give you thanks. We take your grace for granted, and we assume your mercy will always be there. Even worse, we are so slow to share your grace 
and mercy with others out of gratitude for what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. Forgive us for these and all our sins as we continue to pray in silence. Amen. The good news of faith is that there is a wideness in God's mercy, a kindness in God's justice. For the love of God is broader than the measures of our human minds, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. The good news of the gospel is that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. And we are freed to live as Jesus commanded us when he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. For this is the first and great commandment, and a second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. And also from the confession of uh, Belhar, we believe that God has entrusted the church with the measure of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ, and we are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Christ be with you. Share the peace of Christ with your neighbors. Then let us unite our hearts in prayer as we open ourselves to the hearing of God's word. Living God, help us so to hear your word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Reading first from the Old Testament, Psalm 103, found on page 500. And hear the word of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This morning we're blessed to have a choral anthem and I invite the choir to come forward. It does not appear in our order of worship, but we're blessed and grateful that our choir is ready to worship in song. As the uh, choir begins to arrange themselves, and maybe we can get that microphone, yeah, let's get that microphone right there more or less. Okay. Um, I just wanted to introduce that the text from this anthem we're going to sing uh, is the same beginning text as what you and we all said at the beginning in our call to worship today. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. Uh, these words are taken from Psalms 95, and there's also a couple of words from 96. We've been working really hard at this, so uh, please enjoy O Come, Let Us Sing Into the Lord uh, by Emma Lou Deemer. <laughs> sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his The sea is his, and his aid it, and his hands prepared the dry land. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Righteousness to God. 
Sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. For he is the Lord. For he is the Lord our God. Our God. Continuing then to read from the New Testament, the book of Philippians at the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 12. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but it had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me in any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. And from the Gospel of Luke at the 11th verse of the 17th chapter, page 955 in your pew Bibles. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were cleansed, as they went, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. And then said Jesus, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except the foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. May God's blessing be added to this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray, O oh Lord, for you indeed are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's a picture called grace. An old man sits at what appears to be an old kitchen table. His head is bowed. His hands are folded. And the scene speaks a simplicity that our prayers of thanksgiving point to a God. Point to a God who gives us daily blessings and keeps on keeping on doing so. 
which is why it has been offered that the worst thing about being an atheist is that ultimately there's no one to turn to. There's no one to thank. Glance backwards and there's, there's no one there. There's no one there. But such is not the case, of course, for people of faith. And oh, how, how, the, how the Psalms celebrate this approach to life. So many having to do with gratitude and thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. When you think about it, what an insightful outlook for this season of thanksgiving for our, for our kids, for our grandkids, for, for ourselves. For ourselves. That's why I love the Thanksgiving recipe. I love it. Because come Thursday, I know some are already engaging in Thanksgiving meals and probably Saturday and Sunday, but, but the big day's Thursday. And come, uh, come Thursday, I have a hunch that a good many uh, beloved recipes uh, will be relied upon. Turkey, made a certain way. The gravy, Stuffing, yams, mashed potatoes, cranberries, all the sides, and then the pies. Apple, pumpkin, cherry. Recipes from, from parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. And I love them all. I love them all, I suspect with you. But of course, it's not just about the meal. It's about gathering at table. Memories and traditions and long-standing Rituals highlighting, highlighting the ingredient of gratitude, of gratitude. German uh, mystic Meister Eckhart hit the uh, nail on the head when he said, if the only prayer you ever say in your lifetime is thank you, it would suffice. Because in doing so, it puts us in touch with the ultimate giver and graces our lives beyond our awareness and acknowledges that we are receivers. And the German Lutheran pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, Bonhoeffer said that only with gratitude, only with gratitude is life become rich. So you can appreciate the uh, physician uh, who often uh, prescribed a thank you script for folks who were frustrated and, and sad and, and depressed. He would insist that for every kindness extended, patients say thank you and keep a record of it. The doctor had a remarkable, a remarkable cure rate. Why? How? There's something about gratitude that brings a peace to one's spirit, lightens, lightens our whole being and makes us glad for every waking hour. And the British theologian C.S. Lewis observed that, that grateful people are emotionally healthy people. And that praise, he said, almost seems to, to make health more audible. Gratitude is our gravity. It keeps us grounded. It keeps us down to earth. It keeps us humble. It's a chiropractic adjustment, the psychological therapeutic moment, and the spiritual conversion. Gratitude is, uh, as someone uh, shared with me just a year or two ago, like a muscle. The more you use it, you know, the stronger it gets the stronger it gets. And gratitude helps us make more sense of our lives, peace for today and purpose for tomorrow. It can change. Gratitude can literally change your life and my life. And John uh, Updike believed that, that when we cultivate the habit of gratitude and practice it, we're much better off. The old man's head is bowed, 
His hands are folded. A picture worth a thousand, thousand words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Thanksgiving recipe. Gratitude, the main ingredient. And yes, in that hallmark Thanksgiving classic of all gratitude illustrations and pictures, Jesus heals 10 lepers, 10 lepers, and he wonders out loud, weren't there, weren't there 10 that I healed? But where are the other nine? It wasn't the need of Jesus to be thanked. It, it had more to do for the benefit of, of the nine. But doesn't it kind of parallel the smug secularity of our world today that concludes um, it's not all that important to acknowledge, you know, uh, life. But life isn't luck. Life is blessing. And I say that to anyone, anywhere, anytime who says it's luck. No, no. Luck has nothing to do with it. And for the one who returned, for the one who returned to acknowledge and to affirm, there was a surge and a spirit that was a transformational moment that not only would curb self-centeredness, but it would stir one to share and to give. Where are the other nine? Well, where are we some days, right? When it comes to expressing our appreciation and gratitude to God and to one another and to others. Explanations? Well, sometimes we take blessings for granted, right? It's easy to move on and forget human nature. But if the Thanksgiving recipe main ingredient is gratitude when it's not there, we know it's missing. We know it's missing. Tuesday, this past week, I had need and I had opportunity to stop into our shop right. You could see all the cars in the lot. And um, it was almost like the day before Thanksgiving. The place was packed. And I said to somebody, what, what's, what's going on? Well, they said, there's a storm coming tomorrow. Now, when folks in our area, I mean, we live, you know, we live in the south, and when folks hear that there might be a snow flurry, I, the, uh, whether they have run out or not, they have to go out and get bread and milk and eggs and, you know, the whole thing. And, and in the midst of the abundance of all of the food in this one store, I, I, I couldn't believe the impatience uh, and, and the grumbling. Unbelievable, unbelievable. When gratitude is not part of our being, we know, we know it's missing. By contrast, by contrast, once upon a time, a monk in his travels found a very, very precious stone and um, worth a, a lot of money, a lot of money. And he kept it and wrapped it in a, a cloth in his, his traveling bag. Along the way, however, he met another uh, traveler, and as was his custom as a monk, monk, he offered to share his provision with this stranger. And... Uh, Opening his bag, uh, the traveler saw the jewel, and I mean, it was written all over his face. He admired it. And so the monk readily gave the traveler the jewel. The traveler departed, over, overjoyed with what this would mean to himself and to his family. Uh, but a few days later, a few days later, he sought out the monk at the abbey and returned the stone begging the good brother. He said, I have come, I have come to ask you for something much more precious than this jewel, this stone. Give me whatever it was that enabled you to give it to me. Where are the other nine? The Thanksgiving recipe, main ingredient, gratitude, giving, and sharing. And then perhaps, perhaps there's a secret ingredient in the Thanksgiving recipe. A young husband and wife, they were having breakfast one morning and uh, when suddenly she looked him in the eye and um, she predicted, you know, someday 
Someday we're going to be rich. The husband took her in his arms, kissed her, and reassuringly offered, Honey, we are rich. Someday we may even have money. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes, the old man. The old man at table, the gospel, would enable us to see that thanksgiving is based on an inner attitude toward life. Put so well in Philippians, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry and of having plenty and of being in need for I have learned to be content with what I have. The Thanksgiving recipe, main ingredient, gratitude, evokes giving and sharing and learning the secret of contentment. And what better, what better Sunday than Christ the King Sunday, the Sunday before the start of the Advent season to celebrate Thanksgiving because we acknowledge and we affirm that in God's greatest gift, in God's greatest gift to the world in Jesus Christ, we have not only a Savior, but a Lord, Lord of Lords and King of Kings who wants to rule in the very best sense our hearts and minds with a love so amazing, so divine. It evokes our gratitude in response. A lifestyle, a lifestyle, a way of living that is generous and giving. The gratitude attitude, tough? Well, during the 30 years war of the 17th century, one of the worst years in human history in terms of deaths and epidemics and starvation, and economic devastation, there was a godly pastor named Martin Rinkert who in a single year in that terrible time, that pastor buried 5,000 people in his parish. And in 1636, these words were written at a table for children's grace. Now thank we all, our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom this world rejoices. This is the gospel of Emmanuel. God is with us, not as an abstract king, but as the ultimate living presence, celebrating the giving secret on Christ the King Sunday, the inner secret turned outward. An old man sits at a kitchen table, head bowed, hands folded, it's a picture not just for a wall, but it's a picture to live every day. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Where, where are the other nine? I've learned, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and want and contentment. The Thanksgiving recipe a recipe for every day and every season. Amen, amen, and I wish you all a blessed Thanksgiving. We will be singing, <clears throat> we praise you, O oh God, um, hymn 560 of your red hymnals. Please rise.
us remain standing as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I'm aware some of you may have an insert in your bulletins and some of you may not, but if you do not, it is found on page 771. of the red hymnal, correct, 771. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified. He death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue to worship God as we bring forth the morning offering.
we are singing, Be Present at Our Table, Lord, on hymn 843 of your red hymnals. Please rise. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and ever we're adored. Thy creatures bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.
The same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, after they had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. We invite the congregation to come forward as you're accustomed to doing.
body of Christ, the bread of life, take and eat. cup of blessing that quenches all our thirst. Take and drink. Then let us share the thanksgiving. Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has fed us at his table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And who forgives all your iniquity. Who redeems your life from the pit. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He does not deal with us according to our sins. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, as a father has compassion for his children, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, and will also give us all things with him. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. We thank you for the seasons in their march for the promise that seed time and harvest will not fail. We give thanks for friends and neighbors who count our names precious and for strength that meets us when the way is hard. We give thanks for challenges and consolations of our faith, for the sense that however dim our prayers get through for the imprint of Jesus on our life and for the pages of the Holy Scriptures with which we celebrate the birth of a child, the union of hearts in marriage and the passing of those held dear. As we reflect upon our world, we know that in many places there is strife we pray for human beings near and far, for those whose homelands have been savaged by mindless and relentless wars, by violence and neglect in our towns and villages and cities. We pray for the hope of a better tomorrow. Speak justice to this earth that we call home and help us who name your name to be generous in our caring and in our compassion. We pray for ourselves, sometimes with fears too deep for words, sometimes in bondage to resentments we seem unable to shake, so easily manipulated by those who want to sell us something so we're up to date in a culture that is sometimes decadent and out of step with you. Make us over, gracious God, summon us to our best. Come and live your life in us. So shall we be clothed in that peace that passes all human understanding and make us thankful. And hear now, O oh Lord, as we, from our pews, if there are names that we wish to lift up in special need for prayer, let us 
Let us do so. Lord, you know our names and you know our prayers. And you know the persons around us and beyond in special need, whatever the need be. We pray for strength, for healing, for peace, for wholeness. And that as we pray together, we be strengthened when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen as we receive the morning, as we receive, or as we sing our closing hymn, we will receive the deacon's offering. For our closing hymn, we are going to be singing, Now Thank We All Our God, on hymn 543 of your red hymnals. Please rise. faith and in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the strength of the Spirit be with you and those you love wherever they may be, this day, this night, and even forevermore. Amen. <laughs>